So hey, in this video, I'm going to be talking about thrust to weight ratio as a part of my new video series, Rocket Specs. So let's get into it. So, so this channel is about anything related to space. So if you're interested, be sure to subscribe. Thrust to weight ratio and thrust to mass ratio are often confused. And they kind of mean the same. But they shouldn't. Well, thrust to weight ratio is exactly what it sounds. A ratio of the thrust produced by a rocket engine to the total weight of the rocket engine. And is a technically more correct term. Since ratio is always taken uh, of two quantities having the same units. And guess what? Thrust and weight are both forces. Well, mass isn't. And therefore, TWR is a more appropriate term. Well, moving on. So ratio simply means division of two quantities in a way to compare them, right? So TWR is simply the thrust of a rocket engine divided by its instantaneous mass. The reason I said instantaneous is because if you forgot, a rocket is a dumping machine and so it dumps fuel quite a lot. So the mass which it owed to, uh, to its fuel, which is actually quite some mass, um, keeps on decreasing and therefore the TWR also keeps on changing. So as you can see, we have a mass about 24.8 tons. So let's write it down. Mass is equal to 24.8 tons. Which is equal to 24840 kgs to be precise. So as I told you, the mass changes when the fuel is used up. So after the fuel has been spent, the mass will only be 5.34 tons. So there's a vast difference. The mass changes from 24.8 tons to 5.3 tons. So now we can check out the force of this motor. So at sea level it is 593 kilo newtons. So let's write it down. Thrust is equal to 593 kilo newtons. 593 kilo newtons. 593.864 kilo newtons. Which is equal to 593,864 newtons. And acceleration due to gravity on carbon is equal to that of Earth, so it is 9.81 meters per second square. So the weight will be equal to mass into acceleration due to gravity. So that is 24,840 kgs into 9.81 meters per second square. So let's calculate it. 32,840 into 9.81. So that's 243,680 kilograms. Oh, sorry, Newton. Newtons, yeah, weight is in Newtons. Sorry. So the thrust to weight ratio. Calculated by dividing the thrust by the weight, so it is 5.3864 divided by the weight, which is 243680. So it turns out to be approximately 2.43. Well, you would think that it's not too much, but it's still more than what we want. So after the uh, fuel has been used up, the mass will become 5.43 or 5.34 newtons. So we can calculate the weight by multiplying it by 10 to the power 3 to convert it into kgs times the acceleration due to gravity. So let's calculate it now. So the weight will become 52,000 
0.385 newtons so the twr now becomes 593 864 newtons divided by the weight so it becomes around 11.3 look at the difference now astronauts pass at around 9 so it is more than what we want the twr value is actually the number of g's which the craft will experience so due to this we can lose our structural integrity and the astronauts can pass out so it's risky so we can limit the thrust to about 50 percent so we've essentially halved or more than half the thrust so since we have halved the thrust we have also halved the twr let's see what happened since we halved the thrust there we go so we essentially have the twr since they are linearly proportional in order to calculate thrust to mass ratio we can essentially multiply only the g which is 2.43 into 9.81 Or instead you can just divide the thrust by the mass you would get the exact same thing since the G cancels out actually the TWR should be just above 1 if it's above 1 it means that the thrust is just more than the weight and if it is equal to 1 it means that the thrust is equal to the weight and in that case the rocket just hovers around it won't go up but if the thrust is just more than one the thrust is now greater than the weight so the rocket starts going up and we want that for a rocket right but beware if it's too much it causes an acceleration so much that the astronauts can pass out and we can essentially lose our structural integrity now remember one thing the thrust i used for the second twr was the same as sea level at sea level but actually the isp of a rocket engine increases in vacuum so the thrust also increases since the mass flow rate remains the same so actually the twr should be a lot more than 11.3 thrust actually should be written as at sea level and the thrust at vacuum let me show you as you can see the thrust at sea level is 593 kilonewtons but at vacuum it is 670 kilonewtons so a little more than 100 newtons 100 kilonewtons have increased but that makes a lot difference so that's all for this video guys uh, stay tuned to my channel if you want uh, more space related videos and moreover uh, more videos which i have in line for this video series rocket specs and uh, if you're interested in space and made it this far subscribe